it is six o'clock and I will call the 12th regular common council meeting to order. Will the clerk state the quote of the evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It takes courage to be kind. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderperson Ackley. Excused. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. <laughs> Alderperson Flicky Paneski. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Present. Alderperson Salazar. Excused. There are eight present. Thank you. Next, if everyone can stand for the presentation of the colors. All right, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right, Alder Decker, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the 11th regular council meeting held on September 5th, 2023, and the second special council meeting held on September 11th, 2023. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the minutes? Alder, no? All right, all those in favor of approval of the minutes, state aye. Aye. All right, any objection? Minutes are approved. Next, we have a resignation, city attorney. We have one resignation, Adam Westbrook as the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, effective September 22, 2023. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mary. I move to accept and file. Second. Moved and seconded. I also have a comment. All right, uh, Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I wanna first thank Mr. Westbrook for all the work that he's put in in this short time here. We appreciate all he has done. He was a great employee. I would like to express my disappointment that a small but vocal group has bullied an employee into resigning. Doing this through an intimidation and an anonymous website solely because of who he is. I believe this is not who we as Sheboyganites are. From the city of Sheboygan, I wish to apologize to Mr. Westbrook for the harassment that this group has brought upon him. I believe this does not reflect the majority of our city, but a small vocal minority. We are better than this. Thank you, Elder Decker. I know Director Westbrook has some comments you'd like to share. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, members of council. For the past mo nine months, it's been my pleasure uh, and privilege to work alongside some of the most dedicated and professional civil servants I've ever met. When I accepted the position of HR director, I knew there were many opportunities to help the organization heal from prior events spanning several years. At first, I was unsure how willing city leaders and employees would be to undertake the hard work that goes along with cultural change, especially not knowing the intricate relationships between individuals and departments. However, it did not take long for me to realize that every single department head here at the city gives 100% of themselves every day to make the city a better place. The same can be said for most of our city employees. The city of Sheboygan is staffed with hardworking, passionate, dedicated, and most importantly, caring individuals 
who come to work every day ready to make today better than yesterday. These individuals made my time here unforgettable. As many of you know, in May, my family doubled when we adopted two incredible kiddos. Uh, upon taking this job, my dream was to move back to Sheboygan, the community where my spouse and I met. However, after reflecting on my experiences here and the interactions with some of the community, it became clear that my dream was not what was best uh, for my family. Despite what these individuals claim, those who have worked closely with me know that every decision I have made, every policy I have implemented, and every action I have taken has been done with honesty, integrity, professionalism, and compassion. My only objective as HR director for the city was to ensure that all employees were able to thrive and be held accountable to the high standards that you, this council, demands of its employees. There are two pieces of advice that I've received in my life that have become central to my ethos, so I'd like to take a moment to share them with you. The first is that there is no job, no amount of money, and no person that is worth sacrificing your individual happiness for. You should always look out for and advocate for yourself, even when it's hard or in the face of those who wish ill upon you, because at the end of the day, if you can't love yourself, it's impossible to love anyone else. The second thing is that kindness, kindness costs nothing, but has the power to change everything. If everyone in our society showed just a little less hatred and a little more kindness, the world would be a much better place. I sincerely want to thank all of you for the opportunity to be a small part of this organization that is the city of Sheboygan, and I wish you and the city nothing but success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Westbrook. And seeing no other cues, um, this will be a voice vote. All those in favor, state aye. Any objection? That item is approved. Next, mayoral appointments, city attorney, item number six. There is, there is, yep, and that's coming up right after this. There is one uh, uh, appointment. The mayor submits the following appointment for your confirmation. Brittany Wagner to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee. And that will lay over. Next is public input. City clerk, anyone registered? Uh, Mr. Rotten. All right. Mr. Otten, if you could state your name and address, please, and you'll have five minutes. Sure. My name is Russ Otten. My address is 2522 South 7th Street in Sheboygan. Uh, having just heard uh, Mr. Westbrook, um, uh, I can tell you that uh, there is nothing uh, personally attached, excuse me if my voice was at the Brewer game on Saturday night. Um, there's nothing personally attached to anything that I have done um, and I cannot speak for everyone else. But I will say that I am here tonight to set the record straight uh, regarding uh, Mr. Westbrook's resignation, which takes effect this Friday. Since he is still employed, my comments tonight are pertinent to the management of the city of Sheboygan. In parts of his resignation letter published by the Sheboygan Press on September 11, Westbrook states, quote, when I accepted the position with the city, I understood that there was a need for significant cultural growth and change, and I willingly accepted the responsibilities of being a conduit for such change, unquote. Herein lies the cornerstone to why Westbrook's tenure was doomed to fail. Who told him that it was his responsibility to be the conduit for significant cultural growth and change? I really would like to know. The HR director is to administer the rules and regulations that guide the city's employees. The HR director's job is to establish an environment of trust and transparency. The HR director's role is to treat all employees fairly and equally. Instead, HR director Westbrook used every opportunity to push the DEIB agenda into the workplace. This even included a program to train employees on the correct pronouns to use when addressing others. And this created an atmosphere of tension, division, and fear with city employees to the point where the great majority of those who disagreed with this stopped talking and communicating with each other. This is what Mr. Westbrook did. Westbrook's letter continues, quote, whether it is because of my sexual orientation 
because I support a diverse workforce, or simply because I was a random target, these individuals are making it extremely difficult for me to successfully continue in my job." Unquote. The opposition to Mr. Westbrook was based on his job performance and the environment of fear, intimidation, and retaliation that he brought to City Hall. I am one of the group that opposed Mr. Westbrook. His need to be coaxed into investigating the mayor for ethics violations, his unwillingness to proceed with an investigation into the mayor for sexual harassment, his encounter with a male teenage intern working for the mayor, these are the reasons for my opposition to Mr. Westbrook. In the wake of City Administrator Todd Wolf's firing without cause, he made a tense work environment and made it nearly impossible to come to work for many. Westbrook's sexual orientation isn't even on my radar screen. I have gay neighbors who are great neighbors. But when Westbrook made it his responsibility to usher in a DEIB agenda, he lost his professionalism and the respect of others. He crossed the line. Instead of protecting the workplace, he made it a, a playground of division. A third part of Westbrook's resignation letter included, quote, I wish I could have stayed here longer to continue to be a part of the transformational change that has already started, unquote. I truly believe that his resignation signals that this community embraces its traditional values, the values that attract so many to Sheboygan the values that parents want for their families, the values that include the love of God, family, and country. And finally, I want to address each of you common council members. If you believe that this, that this community wants transformational change, one directed by the DEIB agenda, please run your reelection campaigns on that. Please spell out how that looks in the workplace on Main Street and in our library. Then let's see what the citizens want. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have an election of water commissioner beginning the term of October 1st, Alder Decker. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if two or more candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of ballots, ballots be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there a second? Second. Are there any nominations? Uh, I nominate Thomas Howe. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Final call, any other nominations for the Board of Water Commissioners? Seeing none, Alder Decker? I move to close nominations. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Okay, Alder Decker. Okay. I move that the city clerk be instructed to cast a unanimous ballot for Thomas Howell to serve as a member on the Board of Water Commissioners. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of casting unanimous ballot for uh, Thomas Howie, please state aye. 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 Any objection? That item is approved. Thank you. All right, next we have a presentation. And I'll call the members up of the VFW and the American Legion as well. Gentlemen, and the Marine Corps leader here, come on up. Um, so this past week uh, was Prisoner of War and Missing in Action Day uh, across the country, and um, paying recognition to those that have gave the ultimate sacrifice and who weren't able to re return home is something that definitely uh, needs recognition here. So I have my friend Dave Freitag here from the, uh, he's the post commander of the uh, VFW and he'll say a few words and then I'll uh, add some additional comments. Dave. <clears throat> Thank you, Mary. Mayor. Um, it is a privilege and honor for me to be here this evening uh, to present the city of Sheboygan with a POW MIA flag on behalf of the Veterans of Foreign War Memorial Post 9156. Uh, the honor guard behind me 
uh, is made up of three units, as, as the mayor said, the VFW Memorial Post 9156, the American Legion Post 83, and the Marine Corps League Detachment 1446. Um, what's the significance of the POW MIA flag? In 1971, Mrs. Michael Hoff, a member of the National League of Families, recognized the need for a symbol of prisoner of war missing in action. Uh, and her husband was a, an MIA in Vietnam. The flag kind of started in the Vietnam era. Um, she contacted a flag manufacturer to create a flag as the symbol to remember those that are prisoners of war and those that are missing in action. In 1979, President Carter signed a proclamation that National POW of MIA Recognition Day was established and would be recognized on the third Friday in September. As the mayor said, September 15th of this year was that day. Um, National POW MIA Recognition Day is not a holiday, but it's a day to recognize those service members that were prisoners of war and missing in action. It is a day to remember. The motto at the bottom of the flag, which you can't see now, but it says, you are not forgotten. That's one of them. We should not forget our people. As of May 22nd of 2023, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency, its latest update said that there are more than 81,000 service members still missing. This covers all the conflicts, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, the Gulf Wars, and other conflicts. Um, our nation's promise is to leave no service, man, service member rather, behind. So the defense uh, POW MIA accounting agency is tasked with locating and bringing our missing service members home. The um, other, one more point is that the sixth national observance, the only flag that flies at the White House other than the American flag is the POW MIA flag. On six specific days, the uh, Recognition Day, the POW MIA Recognition Day, um, it also is on the National, um, I'm sorry, the um, uh, Armed Forces Day, Memorial Day, Flag Day, uh, Independence Day, and Veterans Day. But no other flag ever flies there other than that flag. Um, Lastly, when you see the POW flag, as you look at it, and you see it and understand the black, understand what's on there, it's a head, bob wire, uh, POW, um, it's a guard tower. It all recognizes our all goes back to Vietnam. But now you look at uh, the, the biggest amount of people that I read was World War II is still missing a lot of people because it was a world war. Um, but when you see that flag, when you walk into this chamber and you see that flag, take a minute to remember those that are missing and the families that have no closure yet. They're still, they don't know where their, their loved ones are and if they ever will be find, found to uh, bring them back home. So um, just keep that in mind when you do see that flag, there's a lot of significance there, especially when you have over 81,000 people still missing. So service members missing. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So now I'll present uh, the proclamation and as uh, the, some of these statements definitely um, articulated in, in uh, the post commander's comments as well. Whereas there are still approximately 72,000 Americans still missing from World War II, 7,500 from the Korean War, 1,500 from the Vietnam War, 100 from the Cold War, and five from the Gulf Wars. Whereas many of those missing citizens were from Wisconsin and the Sheboygan community. Whereas families, friends, and other concerned citizens are left still uncertain of the fate of the servicemen and women who have made the extraordinary sacrifices for their country, whereas it is essential that we continue to honor those who have bravely, bravely served our state, nation, and country that through steadfast efforts with the goal of bringing these vigilant service members home, and whereas on this day we encourage every citizen of Sheboygan to honor returned U.S. prisoner of wars and many Americans still captured, unaccounted for, or still missing in action. Now I, Ryan Sorensen, by the virtue vested in me as the mayor of the great city of Sheboygan, do hereby, do hereby recognize POW and MI Recognition Day throughout the city of Sheboygan. So, Dave, there we go. And uh, thank you again to the VFW for donating the POW MIA flag, which will be uh, sitting proudly up on the dais over here uh, for future generations. Thank you. And we'll do some pictures quick.
All right, we'll jump into mayor's announcements. I'll call Deidre Martinez up for another great proclamation. So, not as, not as great as the last one, that is for sure. So, uh, September is Chamber of Commerce Month. Uh, so whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber has provided ex expertise and has been a dynamic organization in the Sheboygan County for over 100 years, whereas Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce provides resources to educate and support the businesses of the Sheboygan community, to strive and continue the positive economic development of the city to promote tourism and business growth within the city in the Sheboygan community, and whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce works tirelessly to partner uh, throughout the community to advocate for Sheboygan's private and public sectors, whereas the Sheboygan Chamber gives definition to Sheboygan throughout their guidance of local businesses, sponsorship of events, to promote and educate the greater Sheboygan community, and whereas this month, the city of Sheboygan joins all Sheboyganites in commending the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce for their great work of improving the community for a great place to live, work, and start and run a business. So, um, I, Ryan Sorensen, by the virtue of, of vested in me as the mayor of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim September 2023 as Chamber of Commerce Month. So the city is proud uh, to uh, be a great partner and an active member of the Chamber of Commerce. So I present Deidre Martinez with this proclamation and invite her to say a few words. Sorry, I know. <laughs> well, the good news is, is the mayor is aware that I'm never short winded. Um, no, but really thank you so much Mayor Sorensen and common members of the Common Council and the City of Sheboygan for your continued support. We at the Chamber really understand the importance of economic vitality in our communities and we can't do that without organizations that bring folks together, bring businesses together, bring organizations together to lift up and ensure great success. We know that if we don't have strong businesses, we will not have strong communities. So thank you for your continued support. And we appreciate you. Thanks, Deidre. Thank you. All right, just a few um, general items then. Uh, so tonight on the agenda as well, uh, we will be having uh, an item regarding the outdoor comprehensive plan. Uh, so definitely want to thank our team at the Department of Public Works, the leadership of Joe Curlin and the Parks and Forestry team for working on this uh, important item. Uh, so this plan will definitely help us guide uh, the city for the future and how we will make investments in strategic improvements across all of our great parks across the city of Sheboygan, as well as unlock a lot of great opportunities for potential grants, as Joe tells me down the line. So fingers crossed on that. Um, also want to thank uh, the city staff and local business owners that attended the fall business improvement district meeting last Thursday, it was great to see so many passionate individuals, small business owners alike, that care about our downtown, Riverfront, and South Pier District, working together, uh, making some awesome things happen. And I know that there are, there are some more exciting projects in the hopper, and we'll continue uh, to improve these areas for a city uh, to grow. So also wanna do a great shout out to another local business, Legend Larry's, everyone knows uh, Wings are a key important food group. Uh, for winning three national awards at the National Buffalo Wings Festival uh, in Buffalo, New York, of course, uh, the other weekend. Um, it's always great to see many local businesses from Sheboygan competing on the national stage and getting the recognition that they deserve. So congrats to our friends at Legend Larry's. So those conclude my announcements. All right, we'll jump into the consent agenda. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Is it, okay, any discussion on items in the consent agenda? Alder flicky Paneski. Thank you, and I actually have three. Okay. Um, the first is um, the parklet, and there were lots of cross-offs and additions. Have there been problems? With Can you state what item you're referring to? Number 13. Okay. Um, have Have there been problems? I, it was hard. To, it was hard for me to follow what was coming and what was going in the parklet discussion. Uh, uh, city attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, this is uh, we discovered that when you approved some changes uh, to the ordinance. Uh, few weeks back 
uh, that there was another set of ordinances to which this referred that did not get changed. And so this is uh, making sure that those references also are updated. So it's a matter of correlating and corresponding the ordinances. Correct. Okay, thank you. Your next item. My next item is number 16, which is uh, purchasing five vehicles for the police department. And last week we heard the police department budget and it was about a million dollars and then additional wanting to halves, which everybody did, was an additional $400,000. And nowhere in there did we see anything about cars. So were the cars in capital improvements? I don't think, because I don't think they belong in capital improvements, but are they? Yes, the, the, the patrol cars are in capital improvements. They but are in capital improvements. Does yes. Chief police want to add anything else? Yeah, the cars are in capital improvements because of the supply chain issues. We need to order them now because Ford is going to open up the period for us to order them. If we don't order them now for next year, we will not get them. We did the same thing last year and placed the order first week in October when it opened up. We have not received any cars yet. We're still waiting on all of those cars. Uh, so this is a national issue. If we don't order them now, we're not getting them. Okay. Thank you. I did not know automobiles were part of capital improvements. Now I know. And then I have um, number 18, <clears throat> which is uh, the crisis response program. And I'd just like to say I was on a, a countywide committee that encouraged the ride along of social workers with law enforcement to take care of our constituents. So I would, I would. Just to encourage that. Okay. Thanks for the support on that item. Any additional comments on the consent agenda? Alder Prella? Yeah, I actually had the same question on item 16, so you answered that. But I was about the number 14. What is the actual service that the JT will do? I couldn't find that information in the actual document. City engineer. Yes, what, what JT engineering will do is they will design the intersection of uh, Wilgus and Taylor to look at uh, what new equipment we should install there, uh, if we should make the road a little bit wider, if we should put some turn lanes in, adding additional sidewalk. Yeah, the, the equipment at the intersection is really is really old and needs, it needs to be updated. So it's, it's an engineering design contract. So they will look at different aspects of the, the, the whole redesign, basically. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. thank you. Any additional items on the consent agenda for discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Oops, sorry. Eight eyes. Eight eyes, that's approved. All right, next we'll do reports of officers. Item 19, RO number 4223-24, by city attorney submitting a matter of record, a copy of the stipulation for dismissal filed with circuit court on August 30th, 2023, in the matter of Badger State Law Ops LP versus City of Sheboygan case number 22, CV 292, Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any objection? That is approved. Items 28 through 22 will be referred to the Finance Personnel Committee. As well as resolutions, item 23, 25 will be referred to their respective committees. And reports of committees. Item 26, RC number 802324 by the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 202324 by Elder Salazar and Feldy, amending the city's nuisance ordinance, recommends adopting the ordinance and deleting the words in Article 3 in Section 36 2A and strike Section 36 2B. 
Alder Feldy. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. Here I got ahead go. of you. I move to accept. All right. There's been a motion to accept. Second. And, and adopt a substitute ordinance. Are we clear on that? Alder, Alder Feldy, you, your motion is to uh, receive and to adopt the substitute ordinance, correct? Yes. All right. Thank you. That's the way I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, thank you for the copy. And in this plan, there's four and a half million dollars worth of improvements over a five year time uh, frame. We're, we're talking about the nuisance ordinance. Oh, sorry. Okay, got my numbers mixed up. Any discussion on the nuisance ordinance? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Eight eyes. That item is approved. Item 27, RC number 81, 23, 24, by Public Works, to whom was referred resolution number 36, 23, 24, by older persons Decker and Rust, adopting the City of Sheboygan 2024-2028 Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, recommends adopting the resolution to modify the first whereas clause to read, whereas the City of Sheboygan adopted a five-year comprehensive outdoor recreation plan in 2016 and to replace the Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan originally referred to the Public Works Committee on August 7th, 2023 with the September 6th, 2023 final version attached. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the substitute resolution. Second. Moved and seconded discussion on this item. Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Now I'm on the right number. Um, <laughs> I, I'm impressed with the thoroughness of the plan. Let's just put that out there. I also noticed that it was four and a half million dollars worth over five years. I am presuming, and correct me if this is not accurate, that in order to spend the money, this has to come back to us individually, or once we pass this, we have said, you can spend four and a half million dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna call on our Parks and Forestry Superintendent, Joe Curlin. My favorite. Yes, good question. Um, yeah, all that is is basically at whatever point we were in the process of doing this report was our five-year plan. So it, 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 it should be pretty similar to what we're asking for CIP for our, in our five-year plan. It's probably going to be some differences because it was a while ago. But yes, of course, anytime we have a project, um, especially, again, that correlates to CIP, it would be, we're in the budget season for this year, so we'd be doing a new five-year plan um, for 2024 through 2028. We'd be doing that each year, so we'd be coming to the council asking for those, um, and it'll be updated as we go. We'll be coming to the council, council for 2024 CIP through 2028, and then we continue, just, just like we're normally doing, but we just wanted to kind of, we wanted to put it in the report, and that actually helps when we go out for grants the more specific we can be in this report, the better we're going to have with state and federal funds. I get that. Okay. Then follow-up question. I do. Thank you so much. Um, then I maybe it's a city attorney question. When we pass this, are we saying you get the four and a half million? You are not because any uh, spending needs to be approved either <coughs> in the budget or in comprehensive you know in the CIP or if it's outside of that you would it would be a budget amendment which would require a vote of the council so this is a plan okay. uh, but the execution of that plan would still require action by you and I'm understanding from you that it's a five-year plan and we've seen it and it's in the CIP correct thank you any other items regarding the comprehensive outdoor plan Alder Prello just curious, so do we do that every year? Do no, we it's a five-year plan. So, so we will um, do it again in five years? 
We'll, we'll do um, uh, this again, yep, for 2029. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll start, we'll hopefully adopt a new five-year plan then. In 2029? Yes, correct. Thank you. Yep. Additional comments on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Thank you, Joe. Eight eyes. That item is approved. <clears throat> Next item 28 RC number 82-23-24 by the Finance Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 58-23-24 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Pineski authorizing, excuse me, adopting policies to be contained in the City of Sheboygan Employee Handbook. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Uh, Alder Mitchell. Thank you. I would just like to start with, it is listed on the agenda that this item was sent back from committee without a recommendation. That was something that I had asked for in committee just based on the timing and the size of the document. I felt that I can't speak for other members of the committee, but the motion was made. So I imagine that this is the general sense of the committee I know personally I felt I did not have enough time to consume all of it in just the few days to feel I could give a recommendation. Uh, my motion to adopt now is I have right. now Thank been you. through it. Thank you, Alderman Once or twice. Uh, and then I would also just like to recognize Director Westbrook and everybody else who took part in this task. This is going to be a I feel like large improvement might be putting it a bit short since we have some policies kind of floating around and this will actually put them all in one place. It's a lot more thorough, somewhere that people can find them. I imagine it was no small task and thank you to you and your team for all the work that went into putting it together. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to say I back this policy, I back this in. And the only thing that I would like to improve upon it, and this is not something that we have to do now, but in the future I do want to have a um, an employee engagement group that uh, would work on policies in the future. That's all I would say. Thank you, Alder Decker. Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, I too was on the committee and did have extra time to look through the policies. Um, section 2.09 is not there. And I believe it was the acting up. C correct, so 2.09, the language is not there. Uh, as indicated at the committee, uh, the language will m essentially mirror what is in ordinance currently. Um, so the, the content of it is already in our ordinance, uh, but that language will get put in um, once uh, Administrator Bradley arrives and again, those types of updates you will get um, when they're put in. But for content purposes, it's already in the ordinance and it, it'll just spell out in a way that supervisors and employees can understand uh, the process better. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion on this item? Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I suppose I'll direct my question at either Director Westbrook or the city attorney. It dawned on me as we were one away from this that we discussed in committee the plan was that the policies within the resolution would go into an employee handbook that would then become effective on January 1st. Good recollection. And would you like to make a, an amendment on your motion? Sure. <laughs> right, we're supposed to do that, Chuck, right? Sure, sure. An appropriate <laughs> amendment would simply be to amend the resolution so as to provide that the policies take effect on January 1, 2024. And I would move to amend exactly as stated. All right, it's been so moved and seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the amendment for the item to take effect the first of the year, 2024, state aye. 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 Any objection on the amendment? Seeing none, we're back to the main motion as amended. Seeing no more cues, this is a roll call vote. 
please refer to the item as amended. <laughs> that item is approved as amended. Thank you. RC number 892324 by the Finance Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 562324 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Fluky Paneski, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute three mortgage subordination documents regarding loans to catering with Culinary Artist LLC and Black Pig Hellcart Lake LLC. Elder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adapt the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Eight eyes. That's approved. All right, next, uh, other matters authorized by law. City Attorney. Uh, the other matter is uh, an RO, number 432324 by the City Clerk, submitting a certified survey map creating Lot 1A and Out Lot 1B in the South Point Enterprise Campus, including dedication of Public Street right-of-way for a portion of the South Taylor Drive, north of Horizon Drive, as shown on the attached map. That will be referred to the Plan Commission. All right, we've exhausted the agenda. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor of adjourning, state aye. Aye. Any objection? We're adjourned at 642. Thanks, everybody.